In order to understand some of the information provided in this DVD, it's important that we have a very basic understanding of wildfire terminology and wildfire behavior, but please keep in mind these are very basic lessons. If you would like to learn more about these subjects, you can contact your local representative to the Utah Division of Forestry, Fire, and State Lands. But in the meantime, we think this will be a great way to get started. Fire needs three things to exist, oxygen, heat, and fuel. We refer to these three things as the fire triangle. Our first ingredient, oxygen, comes from the atmosphere. It's the very air we breathe. Our second ingredient, heat, can come from a variety of sources, including both natural and human sources. Our third and final ingredient is fuel. Fuel can be anything that may burn. This includes trees, shrubs, grass, and of course, anything constructed from flammable material, including your home and property. When discussing the spread of wildfire, it is important to understand how heat is transferred from one fuel type to another. Heat transfer can happen in one of three ways or a combination of any of the following three things. Radiation, convection, conduction. The transfer of heat by radiation is when the heat from nearby flames can cause combustion of adjacent fuels. With this type of heat transfer, flammable material can ignite without the flames ever coming into direct contact with adjacent fuels. Transfer of heat by convection is very similar to radiation. However, convection refers to the transfer of heat in an upward direction. It is also common for convective heat to produce sparks and embers, which can increase the probability of igniting new fuels. The third type of heat transfer is conduction. This is caused simply by open flames coming into direct contact with adjacent fuels. So let's review. The three things that are needed to create and sustain a fire are fuel, oxygen, and heat. The three types of heat transfer are radiation, convection, conduction. So far we have discussed what is needed to create and sustain a fire. We have also discussed how fire or heat is transferred. Now we will go over the three things that influence fire behavior. The wildfire environment is always changing. Over the years, fire specialists have done a significant amount of research to better understand wildfire behavior. Although they have not come up with a way to consistently predict wildfire behavior accurately, we do have a very good understanding of the things that affect wildfire behavior. The three things that affect wildfire behavior are fuel, topography, and weather. As we discussed earlier, fuel is anything that can burn. We will discuss fuel types and vegetation in greater detail later in this DVD. Terrain is simply the lay of the land, the hills and valleys, the slopes and ridges. The most important thing to remember when discussing terrain is slope. Slope refers to how steep a hill is and is most often given in a percent. For example, the slope leading up to this home is about 12 percent. Why is that important? because fire moves much quicker uphill than on flat level terrain. Here are two more examples of slope given as a percentage. One, this home has a beautiful view of the valley below. However, when considering ways to protect this home from wildfire, the homeowners must seriously consider the steepness of the 30% slope leading up to their wooden deck. Two, this home also has a wonderful view, but the slope leading up to this home is only 12% and would be much easier to defend against an oncoming wildfire than the previous home. The next thing we will discuss is the weather. Of all the things that affect wildfire behavior, the weather has the greatest influence. The weather is also the one thing that we have absolutely no control over. Some of the weather factors that affect fire behavior are the sun, which heats things up and dries things out, moisture, which can come in the form of rain, snow, 
fog or early morning dew. Weather has a very dynamic influence on fire behavior, but its greatest influence comes from the wind. The wind can dry things out quicker, provide more oxygen to the fire, and the wind can carry sparks and embers across great distances starting new fires. The final influence on fire behavior that we will discuss is fuel. Different types of fuel can react differently to fire. Some fuels are highly flammable or can throw off many sparks and embers. Other fuel types may be more fire resistant. Fuel is the one thing that we can do a great deal to influence, change, or completely remove. When considering the things you can do to protect your home from wildfire, the fuel around your home should be your main focus. Because fuel is such an important factor and there are many options on how to deal with it, we have devoted an entire segment of this DVD to discussing fuels and fuel types. There is one final thing we should discuss as we begin to understand fire terminology and fire behavior. A wildfire will most commonly move horizontally along the ground. But once a fire reaches larger fuels, it will begin to climb vertically as well. Just like climbing a ladder, fire will begin at the bottom and work its way up. The fuels that help this fire move vertically are therefore known as ladder fuels. It's difficult for a ground fire to get from the ground up into larger fuels unless there are significant ladder fuels present. By keeping a wildfire on the ground, you have a better chance of controlling and suppressing it. Once a wildfire becomes established in larger, taller fuels, you are now at risk of larger flame lengths, blowing sparks, and embers, as well as increased fire behavior as the main fire becomes exposed to the wind. If at all possible, it is best to keep an oncoming wildfire on the ground. So let's review. What are the three things that affect wildfire behavior? Fuels, topography, and weather. What are the three ways that heat is transferred? Radiation, convection, conduction. What are the three things needed to create and sustain fire? Oxygen, heat, fuel. And finally, what do we call the fuels that can move a wildfire from the ground into the trees? ladder fuels. Now that we have become familiar with some basic wildfire terminology as well as some basic wildfire behavior, let's move on and explore what you can do to improve the chances of your home surviving a wildfire.